Good day, everybody. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And what an honor, what a privilege all to get together again. And just to come and share and what the Lord says about the season, what's going on, speaking about His glory again. And we're going to have an amazing time today. And today we're going to carry on with the subject of glory. And we're going to do a few scriptures, and I further want to carry on to engage just a short summary of the year 5784, the Rosh Hashanah that is coming up next weekend from the 15th to the 17th. So today I just want to carry on a little bit on glory. The other thing, I know it's a World Cup rugby, and South Africans are very, um, how would I put it? Loyal supporters to the World Cup. So I ask, please don't do make comments about rugby while we're on the session. And I hope you all gonna have new revelation, new encounters when we carry on with the glory. And I know we're in such a season of glory now, such a season of the revelation of glory, and that nothing will be the same again. And I want to carry on. Let's go to Ezekiel 11, verse 22. And it says, And then the cherubim lifted up their wings with the wheels, which were beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel, the Shekinah cloud, was over them. This is a very um, profound thing that happened there. Remember now when the cherubim lift up, and he talks about the wheels. These wheels are the ophanims. Remember, they are angelic beings. They are moving thrones. Ophanims are moving thrones. And each and every one of you are on the wheel in the wheels, the ophanims. And they reveal the glory of God. And they move to and fro in all dimensions, all over the earth, and all over in the spirit. So what needs to happen? We need... To be aware. You need to walk in the constant awareness that you are on a moving throne, throne, a ophanum, all the time. And wherever you move, the glory of Yahweh is with you, is in you, surrounds you, because it is also in the wheel of the wheel. So the glory, the revelation of Yahweh is within you and partnering with you all the time. And then we go from to verse um, 23 in of Ezekiel 11, it says, The glory of the Lord rose up from the midst of the city and stood over the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. So important. We all know that the glory of God is coming in from the east side. They're talking, it even talks about the coming of the Lord from the east side. And all of us have got gates and body, spirit and soul gates from the east side. And we need to allow the glory of God to be entering us, to enter us from the east side, to consume us. And that is so important because it's so profound if you take it in, the, in Jerusalem, the east gate is closed. And a lot of times the east gate of people's lives are closed because we're so busy gazing on other things and other dimensions and we forget that from the east the sun riseth up. And that is so profound. Remember now, and the Hebrew people and the Jewish people believe in the mornings when the sun comes up from the east, that is when God comes and He releases His miracles, His signs, His wonders, His glory, His revelation, and He releases new depths of information. He, he, he bestows things and reveals things to the sons of God and the earth. And that is why the Jewish people and Israeli people, when at sunset, when the sun goes down in the west, they start meditating because what they are doing, they're grounding everything that Yahweh released during the day from the east side. They're grounding it, giving it a foundation and let it be rooted in creation, so that it could bear fruit and multiply. Ezekiel 43, verse 2 to 5. Let's go there. 
And behold, the glory of God of Israel came from the east, and his voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. I love it. His voice was like the sound of many waters. Now, you need to remember that 80% of the earth is formed out of water. Your body, 76% of your body is water. So when you in the glory of Yahweh, in that place of intimacy, that place of revelation, that place of oneness, it means that you release a sound in all of creation that sounds like many waters. It's a rushing voice of God. It's a wave after wave after wave. It is a frequency. And those sound of many waters is the frequencies of the waves of the voice of Yahweh that forms. And I love it because that sound, even in the air around you, there is humidity in the air. Waters in the air. So the waters are the things that that stores the glory of God, but it also um, releases the glory of God. It is like a conduit for the voice of Yahweh, and that is so profound because when you and I spoke, our speak, our voices, our sound, our frequency, our glory that causes a sound brings all the waters in creation into harmony. It creates a forms, and it forms, let's call it, like a fireball of glory. It brings a place of harmony, of activity. It's like an explosive, dunamis power that gets released of these rushing waters. And do you realize these rushing waters, that sound that you are releasing because of the glory, actually forms a weapon because creation and darkness realizes and acknowledges and knows that sound. It's a profound sound when you're in harmony and walking with Yahweh. It also said, and the vision which I saw was like the vision I've seen when I came to the foretell the destruction of the city, and like the vision I'd seen beside the river Sheba near Babylon, and I fell on my face, and the glory of the God of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east. Then the Spirit caught me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. I just love it. It is so important now that we realize when we gaze upon the face of Yahweh that we need to face Him, but we need to surrender Him. That it, you get caught up in the glory of Him. You get taken into the inner court. It means you are taken into the Holy of Holies. And then you become the glory of the Lord because you are the temple. You become the Holy of Holies. You see, but there's a surrender that needs to. There's a gaze that needs to be. You need to gaze at Him where He comes from the east side. And that is exactly what, why, what people like Moses, like Enoch, like Elijah, that, and that is when they got caught up in Yahweh. They had, a, they had a desire to come into harmony and unity with the glory of God, that sound, that frequency, vibration, that fire, that heat. A consuming fire. And I just love it that you and I have got that ability right now to step into it. Habakkuk 2 verse 14. Let's go there. But the time is coming when the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters over the sea. You see, this is a dimension that gets revealed. You, you and I need to be filled by the knowledge of the glory of God. And the only way that you and I can be filled with the knowledge of the uh, glory of God is to get to know glory himself, Yahweh. So we need to get the understanding. We need to have that grid. And it comes, that understanding comes from where you were before the foundations of the earth. 
And then you need to get the understanding of how God functions on the journey that you are in. And remember, because you are so unique, that the glory that you're going to release are different from the glory next to you, from the different people. You've got a, a uniqueness of glory to release. And that's why I always say God did not come to clone. He made you unique so that you can always release a new dimension of glory. And all this works of how to get the knowledge of the glory of God comes out of intimacy and relationship. People, and this is how much time do you spend spending in, in stillness and quietness with the Lord, meditating on Him, gazing upon His faith, just watching, not saying a thing, not requiring anything, not asking anything, but just literally gazing upon Him all the time. You see, that is how you bring everything into harmony, into oneness with God, as that you get to know Him in His glory. And what happens now when you spend time in oneness with Him, in, in, in meditating on Him, and gazing upon Him, that is what you become. And what happens now? Now you become an instrument of glory and it's as easy as breathing to release that glory. Haggai 2 verse 9, we all know the scripture and it's been, I believe we're in that season right now. It says, the latter glory of the house with its successor to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace and prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. So firstly, it talks about the latter glory. We're in that time and season now. But before I go there, it says, when you in it, it will be a place that gives peace and prosperity to the house. So where glory walks, there's peace because you're in a place of victory. You have overcome it. You are the perfection of sound frequency and vibration. That is the perfection of love. You are a consuming fire and you are in peace. Because the reality is when you're in peace and in that perfect love, you are actually in reality untouchable because you're in perfect harmony with God. Now he talks about the latter glory. If we look at creation. We look at the Bible from the Old Testament right through to the New Testament and even in our modern day and eras. We always see there are promises of glory. There are signs and wonders and miracles that uh, manifest and it's greater and greater. But the great thing is in John 14, 12, where the Lord says, you will do greater miracles than I. What, it'll, what you actually say is there, you will reveal greater glory than what I did when I was walking the earth. And as I've taught before, how is it possible? Remember now, Jesus asked his disciples, he said, who do you say I am? And some of them said, you are Moses. Some of them said, you are Elijah. Some said, you are a prophet. And then he asked Peter, Peter, who do you say I am? And he said, you are Jesus Christ, son of God, the Messiah. And then God said, um, if they knew who I was, they would never have crucified me. And remember now, Yeshua was crucified before the foundations of the earth. Then he was sent to the earth. Why? Because he had to reunite, bring everything back into glory after um, Adam and Eve sinned. So what happened now? He was only allowed to reveal his father, Yahweh, up to a certain dimension. He could not reveal him in its fullness because then they would have um, acknowledged him and they never would have crucified him. The reality is that you and I would never have been safe now. We never would have had access to come boldly to the throne to see and to hear in the Spirit and to perform all these miracles. So what Jesus did after his crucifixion he said, now you will do the greater miracles. Why? Because we've got access now to release the latter 
glory, the higher dimension. We've got the ability now to release the fullness of the Father here on earth. So the latter glory will be greater than the previous one. And this is what we're in now. You must realize it should give you such a desire to pursue God, to move back to Him, to release the latter glory, the greatest glory, and the perfect revelation of Jesus, of Yahweh, the Godhead three and one. Okay. Then we go to, let's just see now. Matthew 6, 13. And lead and bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. Let lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. The only way that you can be delivered from the evil one is when you gaze at glory itself, when you become glory, when you become the manifestation of God. It says that darkness cannot touch you. And that's what it even said about Enoch in Hebrew 11 verse 5. It said death could not touch him, which means it's darkness, it's sickness, it is disease. It could not touch him. So what happens? Jesus prepared everything. He gave you everything that delivered you from the evil one. Why? What did he say? Come and be seated in me and allow me to be seated in you. Come into oneness. Step into glory. That is what you are. You see, we, we, and so many times when we go through difficult times and we go on challenges and we are persecuted and sickness and disease and let's say things go wrong in our families, relationships, finances, jobs, whatever it is, we ask the Lord to come and do it and He has done everything. So one of your biggest tools and weapons is just step into glory. Then you are delivered of the evil one. You are delivered of the evil. The thing is, you don't even have to gaze upon the evil one. You don't even have to entertain him. You just gaze on glory because nothing can withhold or withstand the glory of God. And John 1 verse 14, it says, And the word Christ became flesh, human and incarnate, and tabernacled, fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as an, an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. People, let's get rid of our religion. The reality is you can see glory. The bale is torn when Jesus rose up as the resurrected, resurrected Christ. Everything was opened up and you got free access to gaze upon his face all the time. To gaze upon glory all the time. It's all about love. Because what you love as first love, that is what you're going to behold and that is what you can, you're going to become. So there's no excuse not to see glory. It says that glory became flesh. So there was a thing that you must remember. You were firstly created as a spiritual being and just as Jesus, you got sent to the earth in a fleshly, be as a fleshly being, but you've still got the DNA and all the ingredients, the character, the nature, the image of Yahweh as it is in heaven, so that you could bring heaven to earth, that your fleshly body can take up the image, the image, the character, and the nature of the glory of Yahweh as it is in heaven. 
and not only in a measure, in its fullness. There's nothing in the word that says you only got ability to reveal him partially. It says in John 70, the fullness of the God at three and one is inside of you. And I believe um, that all of us may, must get into greater intimacy. The more we see him, the more we walk in that unity, the more the earth is going to be filled with glory. Because as we walk, we activate the glory all the time. And let's just take it while I was preparing, the Lord took me to Isaiah 43 verse 19. And I think most of us know this verse. We've heard, heard it in so many prophetic messages. But why is it not manifesting? So let's look at that. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know that? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So what is he doing here? He talks about the latter glory. The latter glory will cause the new things to manifest. You see, and this is why it's so important that we don't build our lives of what that was, but what is ahead of us, what we behold. That is why Paul said it so clearly. I don't look at in paraphrasing. I'm not looking at the things of the past, but I behold the glory, the things to come that God has for me in my future. Now, God uses glory through intimacy and oneness. If in glory, it means you will create new things. You will cause a river to flow even in the desert. You see, glory is a key of creating because it creates, it's a sound, a frequency and a vibration which causes form. So when glory speaks, that is the voice of Yahweh through you, it is busy creating and it causes a blessing to manifest and to follow you. You are glory. You see, and this is time and season that we must manifest. I think too many of the Christians are waiting for glory to manifest. We are waiting for God to come and reveal the glory. And because we are so caught up in religion, He gave it to us. It is time and season that we need to cause the rivers in the desert, that we need to be the people that cause the impossible things to manifest. And glory is the weapon to cause the impossible things to manifest. Everything in creation has got a DNA string of glory. And that gets activated when the sons of God speaks out of the mouth of Yahweh, the breath of Yahweh, the fire of Yahweh, His love. And it activates and ignites the glory of God. It is inside of you and me. And then we're going to cause a spiritual revolution upon the earth. I know people are out there and we all running or most churches are running after revival. We're trying to create events and that is wrong. We need to pursue glory, create glory and what it actually says, activate glory. And that will cause an influx, a streaming, a flooding of souls, a desire for the, and the jealousy of God and for God to fill the earth. So, you see, there are so many things that we need to live in and take hold of because we, we've been caught up in so many systems and things and recipes of God, and we have never stepped into glory, and we're waiting for the Lord to become the glory, but He has given us everything. And that is, a, just want to do two more scriptures before I'm going to go to the new year. And 1 Peter 2, verse 4 and 5, it says, Come to Him, then to that living stone, 
which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen, precious in God's sight. Come, and like living stones, be yourself, built into a spiritual house for a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood to offer, offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. Now, what is it? Come to Him. You a priesthood, so you are given the instruction as a high priest to become and to step into the Holy of Holies. You are a living stone, it means, because you're in the rock, you're connected to Him, you're in oneness with Him, so Come and behold and become the glory which comes out of the Holy of Holies, which is the perfection of glory. And 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16, it says, What agreement can there be between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, even as God said, I will dwell in and with and among them, and will walk in and with and among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You see what happens when you and I realize that we are the temple of God, he is in us and dwells in him. We become the holy of holies. It means that where we walk, glory walks, glory gets revealed. So this is a walk and a journey that we need to become intentional. We need to be aware of God constantly. And you need to take up the thing, are you the Holy of Holies? Are you the perfection of the revelation of the Holy of Holies? And really, as we are sitting here right now, we actually supposed to be seated here, transfigured. We supposed to glow of the glory of God. And as I shared before in my life, I've had many experiences when I got transfigured, fully or partially transfigured. And it's an encounter that blows you away. And you know when that happens, everything around you changes. It's, it's a key to bring everything of creation into harmony with you, but it brings creation into awe and amazing of through who and what God is. You see, this is when you start living a lifestyle where you don't want to become it, but you realize, I am that. And where you instruct your body, soul, and spirit to take on its true identity of glory, which is the perfection of love, the consuming fire of God, and that you behold that image of God. So it should be a constant revelation of glory because you are constantly being transformed into the Holy of Holies, and moving from glory to glory. You see, when you behold God all the time in relationship, you take on that 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 that said, I'm moving you from glory to glory. Then it becomes a reality because you see the dimensions of God all the time when you move Him. And every time He changes an image, he walks from dimension to dimension. The reality is you are taking on that same dimension. And when you acknowledge it and when you receive it, you become it. The reality is you become every time and nothing stays the same. Do you realize that every second there's a transformation taking place in you? But you need to acknowledge and realize it. You need to declare, declare, decree it. And you need to be so excited that you, when you wake up in the morning, that you can't believe or you, you stand amazed to know that while you were even sleeping, Yahweh was transforming you from glory to glory. That when you step into the new day, you're excited to see what changes are there? What new manifestations are there in you? Because of the glory that were deposited and activated in you through the night that you were even not aware of while you were sleeping. It is a constant move of God that never stops. You need to realize it. You are glory. But I want to touch quickly on 
the year. We're going to carry on in the, um, in the coming Sundays further into glory. But I want to touch on quickly next week, the 15th to the 17th. It's Rosh Hashanah. That is the Jewish New Year, and it's the year 5784. And it's known as the year of the door. So, if we look at the seasons of the years 5770 to 5708, it was a decade of Ayan, which is the I, which means to watch. Then we move from the season 5780, which was the decade starting of the mouth, the pay. It's all about declaring and decree. So what happened? 5770 to 5780 is when we watched, we gazed upon God on what He revealed to us, what He's given us. 5780, we started declaring and decreeing it, being it. Now on 5784, what we've seen what we decreed and declare, we become the door. It means we become the gateway, the access point to reveal the glory of God, the greater dimensions of God. So we're stepping into the season now of the Josephs and, and in the Goshen season. Goshen is an area in Egypt. I think it's northern Egypt. Um, and this is where Joseph and met his father Israel after he's been sold by by his um, brothers and everything and he became a prince or like a king in um, in the government of Pharaoh he met his father in Goshen and Goshen means drawing near so in Goshen Israel Joseph's father and him God drew near into unity with God. So what happens now? We're moving out of our Goshen season. We're drawing near to the goodness, the greatness, the glory, and the perfection of Yahweh. So 5784, the year of the door, is the door in the Hebrew alphabet is Dalet or Dalet. And we let's look at the the spelling of it quickly. The first letter is the Dalet itself. The Dalet, it's the fourth letter, which is the completion of creation. So that is the forming, it's creation, it's positioning, everything. So the completion has taken place. The completion of what you saw in this decade of Ayan and in the decade now that we step into pay, what you declared and can decree, it's coming to completion. So it's a door. It's represented by the door. It's represented by the door. And you become the door. Let me put it to you. In John 10, the, yes, the Lord says, I am the door. But if you in oneness, Seated in him and him and you, you take on everything he is. <coughs> Sorry. So you are actually the door yourself. And what happens through the door? It is movement that takes place. It's opening and closing. It means a door is a entrance. So there's an entrance and a release of what is declared, what is seen, what is created in completion by you. Why? Because you're in harmony with Christ. That is what he instructed you to do. Rule and reign. I give authority over everything to you. The second letter is the Lamed. The Lamed's numerical value is um, 30. And if you look at 30, that is when Jesus started ministering in power. That's when he stepped into his ministry. Until today, even the Jewish rabbis, they only become full rabbis when they are 30 years old. And that is 30 is 5 times 6. It's where 5 with grace comes to completeness on man. 6 is man. When grace overshadows man and steps into completeness in man. It's also three times ten when as the God at the triunity come into perfection, the ten. 
So that is Lamed is represented by the shepherd. And the firstly, the shepherd leads. Everybody knows the voice of the shepherd. So what happens now? Because we in harmony, we became one with the door, with the shepherd. It says that he gives you a staff, and it's also for teaching. So the staff is to keep the, the, the sheep together, to keep, bring harmony and unity into all of creation, and to teach, to reveal to creation the glory of God. And it also means from the shepherd, from Lamed, to and from. It means you release to creation, to everybody, everything about God, the glory of God, but you also receive it from Him. So that's a kingdom principle, that from where I receive, I receive so that I can give. That you never forget where it needs to go and where it comes from. It's never just for yourself. It's a kingdom principle. And then we've got the third letter is the um, the, the um, tough. Okay, what happens? Yeah, the tough numerical value is 400. It means it's a divine perfect period. It's where it was the cross. The cross took place to bring divine unity through man and Yahweh in the Godhead. It's also marked of marks and signs, signs and wonders, that we are so divinely united through the cross with God, God that it's a season of the marks and the signs and the wonders of God. We need to know the season. But it's also the covenant. So in the season of the door, is that all the promises, the covenant of God with man will be flowing. In this new door season as well, it's a season of breakthrough. That is when, um, like Joseph, it's a Joseph season. And the Joseph's anointing is a business, business anointing. It's a prosperity anointing. Prosperity is not only finances, although the finances of the world, the billions and the trillions of darkness are going to come into the kingdom. And God's going to release it to the trusted ones. So it's a season where the Joseph comes out of prison. So everything that you were striving with, everything that resisted your prophetic words, your promises, the, the promises of the covenant, um, like when Abram said, your, your, your people will be more than the sand of the sea, earthly covenant, and the stars in heaven, heavenly covenant. So heaven and earth comes into unity. It will be released now in the season of the door. So what happens? It's a kingly position. So it's a season of the king. Joseph was a slave, but he became a king because he became a law maker. So what happens in this breakthrough season, we need to be the ones that will administrate the treasures in, of heaven on earth. Love it. That is what we're moving in now. You see, Joseph was rejected. He became in favor and he became the administrator, the lawmaker of the provision of God as it is in heaven. And we read about Joseph in Genesis 37, I think up to Genesis 53, 52, 53. And we see on his journey how God positioned him in the dark times, in the challenging times, preparing, molding him into his true character and nature. So what happened? He created and God positioned him for an inheritance for his generations to come, for what was released in the covenant. So God, through all the times and seasons that we were challenged, especially in the last, I would say, three years, in the spirit it was chaos because God started pruning us, repositioning us, testing us, teaching us so that we can bring in the inheritance. What's our inheritance? 
Everything of creation belongs to you. And he said, fill the earth and multiply. So there must be a multiplication of his blessing and the glory of God. It's also a season, the breakthrough season. And I just want to touch on breakthrough. Stop praying, Lord, I need breakthrough. You are seated in breakthrough. You are seated in the door. So be it. You need to declare it and start um, praising and worshiping and declaring you are breakthrough. You are drawing breakthrough. God has given you breakthrough. You're in Him. You can't be anything else. So stop being religious. Stop being a beggar and start being a king. You're in the Joseph season right now. So it's a season of the harvest. And the harvest is going to come by the ones that reveals the glory of God. Numbers 14, 21, it says the whole earth will be filled with the glory of God. So you and I are stepped now through the door. We became the, the door. The movement of glory is in and through us. The movement of glory comes through us. Um, so we just need to sit in harmony and unity with the voice of the Holy Spirit, because He's the one that will empower us. The strategy will come from Him. And that's why 1 John 5, paraphrasing verse 13 to 15 says, if you pray what the Holy Spirit tells you to pray, it is done. So we need to walk in the empowerment, the words of the Holy Spirit, what it tells you to pray, and it is done. John 10 says, I am the door. And in this door, you will get divine strategy, divine harmony, divine power. You are set apart. So in this door, you have got vision and access to the completeness of the Father. So there in the season, we need to have discernment. There, there will be many doors opening up. And there were many doors and a lot of people got badly hurt in the past and rejected and things didn't work out and they started doubting God. They, take, they started taking offense from people against God and everything because I don't realize there are times and seasons. We need to, to have discernment through which doors we go. And I've seen it and give you many testimonies of people that will come, God made promises, or they'll pray tonight, and tomorrow morning that door opens exactly what they prayed for. And they take it, and I warn them, don't take it. That door is not from God. Remember, the devil knows what you're praying. So he's going to give you a copy of what God wants to give to you. So make sure you ask the Lord of each and every door that comes your way, is this my door? Not every door is the right door, even though if it might look perfect in the natural. You need to know your times and the seasons of your calling, your purpose, your destiny, and your journey with God. In the season as well of the door, there will be doors that was a hiddenness in the past that will open up now for you. And you see, through intimacy and unity, you'll be able to see it, and God's going to blow us away. And the many times in the past, the Lord showed me that many doors might appear, when doors got closed in the past, it felt like it is the end. And the Lord said, all those doors that got closed to you in the past, in this season, is just the beginning. You see, we looked in the natural. We thought it is the end, but it is just the beginning for the greater doors will be opening up. Matthew 6, with the season of the door, of a key scripture there is Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15, where it says, For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and woeful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up resentment. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and woeful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up resentment, neither will your Father forgive you as you trespasses. 
but you must realize that forgiveness plays a big role. Forgiveness is a key that unlocks a door. And when we forgive, remember it doesn't say that the hurt is gone or everything, but we have made a choice to forgive, that door opens up. You just need to make the choice and be serious about it with a wanting and a willing to do it. Then healing takes place. That is a, that's a season. But you need to make the choice that if you don't forgive, you are shutting down the doors because you're not in a position to reveal the glory and the goodness of God. It's all about God and His glory in the season. And 1 Peter 1 Peter 2, verse 4 and 5, it says, and we read it earlier on, Come to him then, to the living stone, which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen and precious in God's sight. Come and like living stone, be yourself a spiritual house for holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood, to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 also said, But you are chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So what happens now? You are the house of God, you're the temple of God, you are high priest. So now, when we become the door and step through the door, you become the revelation of the marvelous things and the virtues and the deeds and the wonders and the perfections of Him who called you out of darkness. What happens now? When I step into the season, I become the door. It means I am not anymore united with Jesus Christ, Son of Man, but now I am reunited with the door himself, the resurrected, resurrected Christ in heaven, in heavenly places on the throne. I am the doorway of the perfection and the glory of God. And in this season, we, we need to rely on the gift giver. You need to acknowledge who is the gift and the giver. And if it's all about acknowledging and honoring God. You become a gift and the giver of the glory and the perfection of God. You become the outflow, the river of life from off the throne. It says in Genesis 40 verse 8, And they said to him, We have dreamed dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me your dreams, I pray you. You see what Joseph always did? He never took all the glory and the honor. He acknowledged the gift and the giver. And in the season of the door of breakthrough and the release and the flow of glory, you always need to stay in humility. People, when man starts taking the throne from other people, he removes God from his throne. And then you in trouble. That's when pride comes into, into your life. And Genesis, let's go in this whole season of the door. Genesis 41 verse 39 and 40. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as your God has shown you all this, there is nobody as intelligent and discreet and understanding and wise as you are. You shall have charge over my house, and all my people shall be governed according to your word, with reverence, submission, and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you are. You see, now you are the door. You are the revelation in the season of wisdom, of, the re of, of revelation, of understanding, and of knowledge. You are the sign and the wonder. And here he comes, and he's... And there's where God basically can use that prophet where Jesus, where God says, I am still the highest power, the king of kings, but I've given you authority and power to reveal me in all dimensions. See, when we start walking through the door and becoming the door, people will acknowledge 
with whom you are walking and with whom you are in harmony and in oneness. You see, that needs to happen. And that's why I believe that is when we're going to be filled in the season, in the season of the door now, where people will walk the streets transfigured. Genesis 45 verse 7, it says, God sent me before you to preserve for your posterity and to continue a remnant on the earth to save your lives by a great escape and save for you many survivors. It's all about um, preservation. You see, in this season of the door, we've been given the ability to preserve. And preserve as it is in heaven and to call and to help others. It's not about you. You need you and I have been created to bring in a mighty harvest. And the question is, how do you and I preserve creation? If we look at creation in a moment and, and nations, everything, they are chaos. Not because of the devil, because the sons of God have not become the doors, the shepherds, and have not preserved things as they should. Revelation 3 to verse 8, it says, I know your record of works or what you are doing. See, I've set before you a door wide open, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power and that you have kept my word and guarded my messengers and have not renounced or denied my name. You see, in the season of the door, the Lord says, the season has ended for doors that will shut. That God recognized the ones that were faithful, that were humble, that were obedient and trustworthy. And now said, I open up doors that will never shut. What does it actually say? You become a constant flow river of life, of blessing, of all dimension of who God is and of creation. That is who we are right now. And then he took us to Haggai 2 verse 9 and we read it um, early on as well when we spoke about glory and he says, the latter glory of this house which with its successor to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace and posterity, says the Lord of hosts. So when we become the door, when we really acknowledge ourselves seated in an oneness with the door, we are the revelation of the greater, the latter glory in such peace and joy. It means that we are seated now in a position of authority once you in the door it move it actually takes you into a dimension where you are seated in today but you've got access into the yesterday and into the future so what happens you've got the ability to bring the what was into the now and what is to come into the now so you are seated above everything and you bring harmony in yesterday, today and tomorrow. And you bring harmony and the greatness and the glory of Yahweh into now. That is what the door is. The door, the 5784, this 5 is the grace of God that's upon us and the multiplication of his grace, of his favor and his blessing. The seven is completeness, that there's a season of completeness that is manifesting now and that is available in all of us. And the eight is the new beginnings where the glory of God is remember. That is that river in the desert. Things, unusual things, new things, greater things, greater miracles will happen now. See, it's a restart, is a rekindling of the fire of God. There was a recalibration that took place that's manifesting right now. It's a new beginning where God comes, nothing of the old anymore. It is new because you need to blow the people away, the earth away, creation away that they need to become in awe and amazement. And the four me means it's a completeness of creation. Remember now, what you decree, declare, what you saw, 
and you spoke and trusted and believed it, is going to manifest now in completeness. God has the four utterances. So it's the four utterances of creation coming into harmony with the four faces of God out of the four corners of the earth, out of the four wind directions, and everything comes into harmony. And it's a completeness of the sound frequency and vibration that comes into harmony with the four faces of Yahweh and creation. And the glory of God will fill the earth. So it's an amazing thing. So what is our jobs now? It's very important that you position yourself for the Rosh Hashanah, for the new year taking place from the 15th to 17th. So each and every one must go and look at his life to say, what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to remove? What is there in my life that's still just religion? What sin is there? Is there unforgiveness? Is there bitterness? Um, are there any lies that I believe about God, about creation? All those type of things. And repent. We've got the gift of repentance. Repentance. Reposition yourself into a seat of peace and rest, of stillness, in joy that you can function out of all the power, all the goodness, out of the glory of God, that you become, remember that sound of rushing waters that we discussed early on, that you are constantly creating and partner with Yahweh all the time. And this is not just for some. Don't go into religion where I know some pastors will say, no, the spiritual dimensions and the glory is just for some. Others will only see it when they enter into heaven one day. Let me tell you, it is for now. And you need to realize whatever other people have, the, the, the great glory guys of the modern era, the people of the past, the Enoch's, the Moseses, the Elijah's, the John's, whoever you think of, um, Joseph, David, all of them, you've got a greater dimension right now available to you. So release it, be it, believe it. It is there for you. So I bless you with that. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let me just pray. Father, in this time and season, we come and we surrender into the door. We declare and decree that we in harmony and oneness with you. That everything of your word is yea and amen. And that we're going to release you. We're going to reveal you in honor and glory and praise and worship. And nobody will doubt that you exist, that you are a living God and a faithful God. We declare that we are on the throne. We become the river of life, life-giving spirits walking on the earth, and we'll be that flow of the glory of God, of His goodness, of His word, of the covenant of God, of the power and revelation and provision of the blood of Jesus Christ, of all the names of Yahweh. We are that. We are the door. And we are in the door with all its character, with all its nature, and in its image. And it is done in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach. May you all be blessed this coming week. We won't have Sunday life and um, on Wednesday, there won't be any mentoring program. I am flying on Tuesday. I need to go to a funeral in America quickly from Tuesday and Monday. I'm flying back. And once we are back, we're going to have a feast going more and more into glory. And don't forget the oneness conference. People, we're going to share revelation. I'm going to share revelation and things that I've never shared before. And believe me. I've done a lot of research and things, and I'm still in awe and amazement of what the Lord showed me. So I bless all of you. Have a great time. Bless you.